get good. This is Endless Space 2 Awakening. We are playing as the Fireborn Guardians of the Galaxy, the Unfallen. And I promise, guys, today we are going to get to test out our pirate fleet. We are going to. It's on its way. It's going to land and get some of the Sofons right here at the very least. Although they'll probably retreat, which is annoying in and of itself. Your help is late, though it has deprived us of the glory of a bloody last stand. It is still welcome. I don't know what you're talking about. We're not helping you. You have this perception we're helping you. We don't care about you, Isho. We didn't invite you into this alliance. You're not our problem. You're the Umbral Choir's problem. If they want to help you, they can help you. We don't care. They did switch our government type last episode, which is super annoying, but it's okay. We're gonna be fine. Nakos needs something to build. They do have a vine ship ready. We'll probably pop that out and put it into a fleet relatively soon. Uh, Anna... Thomas, that was a good point that if we build an Academy Embassy, there is a better or a faster unlock for heroes. However, I don't think it's going to necessarily yield specific heroes, so we might not get Hishos for it. I don't usually build the Embassy, mainly because once you find the Academy, you unlock heroes naturally anyway, but this does reduce the points required and might be worth it for that reason alone, so I'm going to go ahead and build it. We'll try it. We will try it. It can only be built once, which is fine. We'll just build it here so it's done in two turns. There's not a whole lot else going on here in Nakos anyway. Is the system relatively happy? It is. So we can go ahead and build Optics Research Lab as well if we'd like. And we can build Graviton Laboratories here. That's fine. Basically, we're just finishing building out this system. We could be doing more military stuff here, but I don't feel like there's a need for that just yet. Uh, we can also reduce Aurora Waves, reduce Permanent Monsoon. We can go ahead and start terraforming stuff here if we want to. That's not a terrible idea either. I think what we'll do if we do terraform is we'll just take everything to forest. Which is not a bad idea because we're very, very close to unlocking super biofuel. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Super biofuel should be next turn, I believe, which is great because that means our production is going to ramp up like a thousand fold. There is a pirate fleet here, apparently of just some prowlers. Uh, sure, whack the pirates. Whack the pirates with our giant econ behemoth. Make us some more money. This should go very quickly. Decisive victory, they're gone. We get a little bit of dust and science there. No problem, very happy for that. This is our newly, whoops, our newly minted fleet here. They should all be upgraded, they are not. So we have a couple more to upgrade, but that's fine. We are shy a little bit of manpower here. And unfortunately, you can't really buy manpower. You can trade for manpower, but you can't buy it. Uh, this is interesting, though, because this is technically a pirate fleet. We're going to go ahead and attack this Feyring. They're likely going to retreat. What I'm curious about is whether we're going to be able to capture them in the time it takes them to retreat. And one of the things we're going to try doing is using this Prudent Positions battle plan, which will lower our damage considerably and should prevent us from out-and-out -out killing them. Decisive victory. Well, they died anyway. So much for not out and out killing them. Uh-oh. We have a fleet stuck to our cursor here. There we go. Fixed. Uh, that was not what we were aiming for at all. Uh, we do want... What is it? One more pirate bomber? Or... Yeah. We don't have room for it. Okay. I am wrong. We'll just keep moving this fleet up. We're going to bring them up to the UE line here, and it's perfectly fine to do that because we also know for a fact that they are going to get upgraded on their way there very easily. Our Vine ships are on their way to Perseus. They should land within a turn there. And then if we come over here, we have another set of Vine ships that are vining their way into the Hesho's territory. Are you guys being... Who are you being invaded by? I don't see anyone there. And that's a little... I mean, is it just this patrol ship right here? Because if it is, that's hilarious. Like, our hero here can wreck that ship. I guess we want to go get Zubin as well? Or we could just bring this back and use it to really, really start vining in these uh, areas over here with the UE once we clear them off. I don't know that that's a terrible idea. I think it's actually a good idea. A very, very good point was also made. Uh, Anna Thomas, you made this in the comments. If we can maintain control of one system that we capture from every other empire, what that will mean is that we are able to then integrate their population into our population, which will allow us to get more benefits from some of our unique buildings and things. So that's actually a really good idea. Right here, we're going to kill this fleet. 
The hope is that once we kill them, we can go ahead and successfully reinvade this system. They are entirely tanked against energy weapons, and they have projectile damage only. In our case, we have projectile damage primarily, and we are slightly tanked to projectiles and heavily tanked to energy. So what that means in theory is that if we sit back like this, we should do considerably more damage than they do. What is their range? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They have no range. So if we do prudent positions here, we should do considerably more damage than they do. And we should stay relatively safe while doing it. We can also go for take trophies here, but prudent positions is a much, much better option based on our fleet layout. I'm going to go in here to advanced and see how we can best lay this out as well. I do feel like we kind of want at least one fire team with every one of our support ships. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Although really, no, I mean really, they're they're kind of... Yeah, let's, let's leave it like it was. I think they had a very good AI choice on that one. Uh, and we'll go ahead and watch this. This is going to be a full-on fleet fight, or they're just going to run. Well then. You, you guys just run away. Have a nice time. We are sieging that. Well, we're not sieging them because we don't have manpower, but we will siege them soon. Our vine ships are coming in. They should be bringing manpower with them. This uh, Pleone right here is about to be ready to be sieged as well. So at this point, it's just a matter of time. We're just kind of working our way through the UE systems here without any concern for what's going to happen when we succeed, because we are going to succeed. A, we found a Guardian on Jaya, that's great. Go find more Guardians. Go find more Guardians, explore this branch over here, do all the things. Oh, is this the actual Choir's home system for sure now? We do know for sure now, that's right, we did discover it, I forgot about that. What do you want from us? So... We're not gonna really worry about that too much. Like, we're, we're just basically waiting for an opportunity to leave our alliance. And in the meantime, we're taking advantage of the fact that we do have an alliance to keep the other empires at bay while we work on the UE, which is totally legit. That's perfectly fine. They're gonna start sending pirate ships in here because we didn't buy this off. So realistically, if we just leave this fleet here and we kind of defend this system against pirates, we should be able to capture some ships. But we're also going to bring it up here and shoot at these Sophons. They're probably going to retreat here, that's fine. We're going to go for the minus 50% damage. Reality is they're going to retreat, so we don't need to watch it. I mean, I could have left it on watch, it wouldn't matter, because they just retreat anyway. Bye guys. Nice day. Uh, okay. My hope is that they will actually send back in those Vaulter ships that we had over here a short time ago, and that we can capture some of them. In the meantime, since we do not seem to be able to do that, we do have this quick scan unit whose entire purpose is to find stealth units. And I think what we're going to do is send them over here to Nihal because we keep seeing new units kind of pop up here. We also know that we were negatively hacked in Sylphie recently. So what I want to do is try and up our defenses here a little bit. Let me go ahead and check Nako's here. Program's already active, program's already active. Okay, so what other options do we have? You don't have enough bandwidth. We need more bandwidth to be able to run those, so I guess we'll have to wait. That's unfortunate. I would really not like to have our uh, our government type changed again. Okay, ending our turn here. Should be ready to invade Pleone next turn. We do have full manpower on that fleet, and we've just sieged them down to zero. So hopefully this will go rather smoothly. Smoking Gun Part 2. The arrest of the spies creates something of a scandal, but during the public trial, your skillful political testimony convinces the majority of your population that your government is a shining beacon of light in a sea of darkness. The subsequent execution of the spies demonstrates that, despite being bound by the truth, you are no soft touch either. Oh, you guys want a truce. That's cute. That's very cute. No. That's very cute, Yui. We know what truces with you look like. We know what it feels like to have your knives jammed into our back. We're good. We'll take a pass. We'll take a pass on that one, guys. Let's get a little bit more resource generation here. Great for our... Oh, did I do the right thing there? Yes, because this is our governor. I, I was like, that was Luna Barxis, wasn't it? I messed up. No, it, I, I did the right thing. I did the right thing. Pi is leveled up here. Definitely going to go for Bean Counter. Best skill in his tree. 
Next up, we'll probably go for Tech Hub here, which is also very, very nice. And we'll look for a system with a lot of anomalies that we can put him on. We are working on the Trade Clearing Bureau in Silphy. That'll give us market control, which will help with more of our peaceful endeavors. Endeavors that, by the way, have been completely derailed by this constant state of war that we're in. Not that we wanted to be in it, but hey, it is what it is. We're probably going to destroy them here. Every time we try to, like, not kill people, we kill them anyway, so... Yeah, you're going to die here, we're going to capture your ship. You're going to die here. Well, at least we got paid for it. You can't complain about that. Luna Barxis has leveled up. Let's do more fleet shield absorption. Everybody move. Everybody move in. And our vine ships have arrived on Perseus. Lovely. Entwine that thing. One turn to get that entwined down. We do have a fleet coming in to stop this battleship. And Pleon itself is out of manpower. So we're going to invade here. We will go for a full-on blitz. Decisive victory. Welcome to Pleon. No longer a UE system. If we occupy, do we immediately get vines? Is, how, is that how that works? Also, is Pleon a system worth occupying? It has a trade company, which will probably be destroyed. But it does also have Adamantian and three planets. I think Tylus is the one that we'd like to occupy, so we'll probably just raise this. Raise it to the ground. No more. No more from the UE. None whatsoever. Okay, so these guys are just going to hang out here. We're not going to siege because there's no point in sieging when they have manpower. We're just waiting. Is that a UC fleet? It is. UC fleet is def defending Nair for us. Right on. Good job, UC. Glad you guys are such great allies because we're not. Um, okay, so Pleon, we don't really need to stay here and defend this. What I think we'd be better off doing is moving them forward to help siege Nihal. So that's what we're going to do. I don't think we even lost much manpower doing that siege either because they had no manpower to defend. So as long as we're patient, our sieges are going a little bit more cleanly than they were in the past. I'm going to send this vine ship up here as well. Got lots and lots of vine fleets on their way to do their job up here. And then of course we have this fire ship fleet right here that's just going to kill the civilian ship and get 900 dust for it. What is the manpower like on this system? It's basically gone, so now we're just kind of hanging out and waiting. There's another civilian ship on the way right here with three population in it. That is never, ever going to reach anywhere, just so they know. It's not going to happen. We're going to sit here and defend Pardalis and make them come to us. I like this. So far, we're doing very, very good with this. We are building more manpower improvements right now, but as those finish, we should have queues opening up, and as they open up, we're going to start putting in our super biofuel that we just unlocked. Unless we just decide to prioritize it, which is possible. Tylus was successfully hacked. Academy reminder. Okay, all privileges will be gone in two turns. Yay, we can actually make a push for the Academy on this next go. I think that's probably a good idea. Here in Kraz, what I'm going to aim to do is create a backdoor. Give us some more spots to hack from. Ha! Ha ha! This is less than you offered us last time. Are you high? There's no way. Oh, hello. Okay. Well, that's actually kind of BS because we had another fleet that should have arrived at the same time their fleet did. But sure, whatever you say. Oh, it was a stealth fleet. You guys see that? They had a stealth fleet just hanging out there. So what we're going to end up having to do here is probably retreat because our vine ships are at huge risk here. Yeah, we'll retreat. It's fine. We will retreat at Perseus. We did not lose our entire fleet of vine ships there, which is the most important thing. Plus, we already got Perseus, so there's really no loss there. It's like, okay, guys, good job. You did it. Not really. Uh, vine ship fleet needs to get out of dodge. Go, 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 go. And unfortunately, our combat fleet had to retreat there as well. Because that's the one we're going to wish we had, you know, not had to retreat with. But we should have another fleet kind of... Oh, that was a vine ship fleet coming across there. I forgot. Okay. So that was kind of my mistake here. Kill the civilian ship. And then while we're at it, we're going to bring these guys down here to engage the enemy. Hi. Sup. Just going to go ahead and do this. Don't mind us. They have one battleship landing, but we know they have a stealth fleet here. That is no joke. Uh, Tylus, we're going to go ahead and... We could kill one of their heroes. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Injure one of their heroes. 
take one of their heroes out of the equation. Parolium should be open now. We're going to do super biofuel here. Four turns to get that done. Parolium is one of our newer systems, and it's already this far developed. Like, it's kind of crazy. It really is just kind of crazy. We'll do reduced geothermal after that, and then everywhere we're going to turn into planet types that make more sense. Uh, this is a Mediterranean already. It doesn't look like we can terraform Mediterraneans. We will colonize that lava planet as well. Yeah, this should be fine. This should be fine. Nakos is working on mining and a bunch of other stuff. We're going to actually prioritize super biofuel there. Six turns to finish that. No big deal. We have entwined Perseus. You don't say. You don't say. I had no idea. We cannot afford to repair our vine ships just yet. So what we're going to do instead is we'll just dock these guys up. Kind of let them repair naturally if that's a thing. I'm not entirely sure it is, but I'm hoping because they are expensive to repair. And we'll send these vine ships up here to Pleon where they can go ahead and set down roots again. While we're at it, not seeing much action up here from these pirates. But we should have another pirate fleet en route. Ah, not right there. Right there. Yes. They should be en route. They're going to land there next turn. And we might move our hero over to them instead of leaving the hero up where they're not getting any action. I'm honestly, like... It's become problematic just to get combat with our pirate ships. That's all we want. We're just, we're like, all I want to do is get some combat. Just, just give me a little combat, please. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And while we're at it, we're going to put some new defensive programs on. Blocks the create backdoor outcome for any hostile hacking off passing through the system. Plus 30% bandwidth on hacks through this system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a defensive, another defensive thing there and another defensive thing there. That should hopefully prevent them from changing our government type anytime soon. It does mean we're not going to be able to use accelerators for offensive hacking, but that's not as big of an issue to be honest. And our seed ships are here on Nihal. They may actually be at risk, but Nihal has zero manpower. So we're just going to blitz them and decisive them. Yeah. Done. Yep, burn it to the ground. Burn everything. Darn, it's super sad, guys. Super sad. Now we're gonna send our seed ships probably back here to try to regain some manpower before we send them up after Deneb. In the meantime, if we're really lucky, the Hisha will go ahead and colonize that for us, which will be kind of entertaining. I mean, it seems like they're just waiting. Although, I do feel like the UE has been very smart with the way they're using stealth. Like, I want to I wanna wonder if they have a stealth colony ship just waiting right there to take that. A listening outpost on the far edge of your territory has picked up a garbled communication and sends an urgent message up the chain of command. Someone is leaking military secrets to a rival empire and could jeopardize upcoming offensive operations. The message and its origins are unclear, but a digital forensics team is able to pinpoint one clue that the attached files contain metadata originating from the terminal of an artillery officer of one of your minor civilizations. The soldier's record is exceptional, but there have always been those who complained at no. 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 We're not going to be xenophobic, it's fine. You are a source of disharmony, creature. Yes, I will continue to ignore your pleas. I don't care about you. Uh, Unfallen population and Pulso's population is growing nicely. We have lost a Bas Rixos on Nakos, and I'm not sure why. That's kind of weird. We are definitely producing enough food here. Not sure what that's all about. Hmm. Okay. Exotic rations is finished on ESO, which is now doing predictive logistics. That's fine. Fire ships are still hanging out here. We're going to fire on this battleship here. They will probably retreat, provided they do not, though. Well, this isn't our pirate fleet. We're still trying to get our pirate fleet out there. Okay, what are we like on time? we got about 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left. I can do this. I'm going to get our pirate fleet out there, guys. I refuse. Oh, there we go. Why is there a single vine ship? You know what? I'm not even going to ask. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to do the thing. They are all really, really bad at long range, it looks like. Yeah. They've got nothing at long range. So if we use this tactic right here, pretty much nothing they can do. We're just going to basically damage their crew and then send boarding pods their way. And we're good at pretty much every range. Yeah. 
I mean, it looks like our boarding pods are actually even most effective at long range, which is crazy. It's crazy. We'll watch this one. We'll watch this one and see how it goes. This should be interesting, at the very least. If this fails horribly, then boarding pod fleet maybe doesn't work. But if it succeeds, then in theory, we will capture a couple of their battleships and be able to either use them against them or just flat out sell them. Plus three influence per destroyed command point on fleet. That's a good tactic for the UE. It's a very good tactic for the UE. All right, warp ins are happening. Let's go full cinematic cam here. Dun, dun, dun. This is what we've been waiting for, everyone. We did not manage to upgrade one of those ships, though, so one of these ships is just completely unarmed. And we can't upgrade them because they're in combat already. Where did they even get engaged on, then? Because I thought we stopped them, but I guess not. Well, anyways, here we go. We're gonna try this out, see what happens. Got our laser beams going. They're uh, working on some crew damage here. Come on, guys. Boarding pods out. Oh god, I love the way the lasers look when they rake across the holes. The way they draw lines is just gorgeous. I wonder if we'll, we'll actually see the boarding pods. Is that a boarding pod en route right there? Is that what we're, we're seeing kind of soar straight across? Come on, show me boarding pods. Show me boarding pods. That's what I want to see. I hope that boarding pods don't require a specific, like, medium range or something. Like, I don't think they said that they require that. Oh yeah, you can see them hitting. Did you guys see those big... They look like giant missiles. They look like giant missiles. That's what they look like. Come on, guys. Board those ships. Bring them home. I wonder, how do you tell if they've successfully boarded? That's another big question I have. Like, do they stop firing? What is the, the visual indicator that you have successfully converted an enemy ship? Ooh, I think we're about to lose that one right there. Bombers are all over that thing. Could be wrong, though. Yeah, the bombers are really the only thing they have that are going to come in and, and do significant damage to us, potentially. Oh, I think we just blew up one of their ships. That was not our goal. Our goal was not to blow one of them up. We wanted to capture them. One of their... Okay, no, their ships are firing. I was going to say, one of their ships looks like it's not firing. Oh, and there we go. We lost the ship as well. It's so one for one right now. And I'm not sure if our boarding pods are, are showing themselves to be effective at all or not. It's hard to tell. Oh, it just ended and they weren't shooting though, so maybe? We captured one cruiser. Okay, we lost a vine ship and three other ships, but we captured one cruiser and that was considered a defeat, sadly. So, what did we learn? We do hardly any damage to their other ships, it looks like. They did a lot of damage to us. They used influential, we used prudent positions. As for both fleets, we should have had reduced damage here. I want to go to advanced and see how this looks. So if we include missed shots, they missed a lot more shots than we did. We had a lot more hits. Is this the ship we captured? It is the ship we captured. And we did do significant damage to that ship. Damage absorbed by fleets. Damage caused by your missile weapons. Prudent positions affected this value. They used railguns to massive effect. Interesting. So, railguns they had massive effect with. They did a lot of damage with bombers here as well. We already knew bombers were going to be a big part of their damage. Hole plating absorption was pretty good, and shield absorption was pretty good as well. Now, what's interesting here is we can't see, like, what our boarding pods actually did, unless they're included in missile damage, which could be a thing. But what we are noticing is that the ship that we damaged the most 
in theory. Like, this, this is the biggest damage pie we have. That's the one that we captured. Huh. Interesting. Flotillas were at medium range in that phase. They were at long range in that phase. Long range during that phase. Medium, short, medium, short. Okay, so even though we chose to stay at long, they were able to close in on us. What's interesting to me here is that they ended up at their ideal ranges, even though we stayed at long. So, like, even though we stayed at long, because they went short, they closed to short range. Which is crazy, because I, I wonder if that basically just affects when you close. Like, if you both go medium in this first area, like, I don't know, man. I don't know, that's really weird. Like, you would think that because we chose long and they chose short, we would end up in medium. But they were able to actually close the short range, and that's when they, they got the majority of their damage at medium and short range, it looks like. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy. Okay, so I don't think boarding pod fleet is working as it is. Uh, I think that as it is, it's not working particularly wonderfully. We did capture one of their ships, though. Where was that fight even at? Oh, okay. Well, that makes it a little bit different. So one thing we can do is we can go ahead and add their cruiser into that fleet. Because that is a little bit of that War of Atrophy thing that we're trying to do. Uh, we did have an unupgraded cruiser here. This is why this engagement happened earlier than we expected, because they basically jumped in on our system stealthed. Which is fine. Like, that's okay. Especially since we could follow up with these guys. I think what we really want to do, though, is we want to get some more money so we can repair first. So I'm going to go to the marketplace and see what things we can potentially sell here to make a little bit more money. Because if we can repair our fleets and then attack ourselves, we could theoretically capture more of their ships. And that's honestly what I'm after here. I don't think we ended up using Voidstone for our second Empire improvement, did we? We did not. Okay, so we can sell our Voidstone. Sell this Gossamer. Sell this Latas. Yup, sell all the things. Come back over here. And repair. And I think what we'll do is we'll repair this small fleet as well, if we can afford to. How much does it cost to repair this whole fleet? 14k, we do not have that. We do not. So let's take a look at that small fleet and see what we have that's long range. That guy is long range, so we'll put him in. Long range, so we'll put him in. Long range, so we'll put him in. More long range. Lovely. More long range, and then more long range. So basically, all we did was try to put in all of our little long range guys here, and we will repair as many of these guys as we can. Three more in need of repair. We are sort of out of, well, we're not out of resources. Look at this transvine here, guys. Holy crap. We'll just sell like 200 of them. We have so many transvine. It's not even like reasonable how much transvine we have. Uh, we're not using super spuds either, so we'll just go ahead and sell those as well. Some of these we may have been hoarding to boost, but I think this is a better use at the moment. God, these stealth fleets are really causing headaches. I think we're going to put anti-stealth on like all of our heroes from now on. Okay. Why are we not able to attack? We're not able to attack because the cruiser is in that fleet? This is our cruiser now. That doesn't... So we're able to have the cruiser, but we're not able to use the cruiser against them. Gonna put our siege ships away. I guess we just sell this then. It's kind of silly that we can't actually use their cruiser against them. It is what it is, though, I suppose. That, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That seems like something is potentially not right. Okay. Go on in, guys. I'm gonna try this again with some different tactics here. Do they have any beam weapons at all? They don't. Well, they do. One of their cruisers has beam weapons. So we're not gaining much by doing... Like, we've already seen Prudent Positions doesn't help us as much as it helps them, apparently. 
Um, 75% shield absorption doesn't really help us here either. It does keep us at sort of ideal ranges, so I think maybe we go with that one. And what I'd like to do here is there is one branch that's going to go to medium, and for that particular branch, what I want to do is I want to put our pirate cruisers in. And the reason for that is I'm hoping that them getting a little bit closer will mean more success with our boarding pods, but we'll have to see if that's how that goes. And this is going to be it. After this fight, guys, that'll be the episode. But we're going to try this again and see if this works a little bit better now. They did kind of catch us unawares. We had ships that weren't really geared for combat. We even had a vine ship in that fleet, so... It is what it is. It's okay. Here we go. This is it, guys. Hopefully we capture a couple more ships here. I'm starting to wonder if you do need to significantly damage them to capture the ships, and that's something that we're not doing. Because I, as I understood it, crew damage was what was necessary in order to capture them. But in the past, when I've used boarding pods, I pretty much just used boarding pods as a weapon. Like, that's all I did. I just loaded the ships up on boarding pods. I didn't use any beams to lower crew or anything like that. I had assumed this would be more effective than that, but I may be wrong. We may just need to stack boarding pods on everything if we want to do a boarding pod fleet. Because I've had that be effective. I've been able to effectively capture enemy ships just by loading them up with boarding pods. Okay, so now we're seeing a lot more damage come in. They're actually losing ships here. And if they're losing ships, but we're gaining a couple that we can sell every combat, that's still us winning, you know? So I'm not sure if that's ideal or what the actual ideal thing here is. It may even be more ideal for us to just put out, like, bombers and fighters, or at least fighters as defensive units against their bombers, and then just load up on boarding pods. Another one of their ships pops. Yeah, so this is, this is more in our favor already, I feel like we're starting to see. Come on, guys. Do the job. And I have the feeling that if any of their ships survive, we'll probably potentially capture it, but I could be wrong there. Only time will tell on that one. Bringing in these small ships, though, does effectively neuter the bomber damage. They're going to do a lot less with their bombers on small ships than they would on mediums. So just by bringing this rush of little ships here and having these sort of mixed holes, we're actually causing them to be less effective. And another explosion. Okay, so we're probably not capturing anything this this particular mission, or this particular combat. Question is, will we lose anything? That's a, a much bigger issue there. And I think if we want boarding pods to work, then the answer is... Oh yeah, we wiped them out there. We wiped them out, we got a ton of dust, we got a ton of science, we did not get any boarded ships there. I'm honestly not surprised. Um, yeah. Even sending our boarding pod ships to medium range didn't really do anything there. So I think if we're going to continue with the boarding pod strategy, what we need to do is we need to, at the very least, look at what we're doing with that strategy. So right now, we're just essentially sending in one boarding pod. Boarding pod health is 400, manpower DPS is 10. Duration of boarding engagement is also 10. So the question becomes, how do we increase manpower DPS? Now, we were using Heart's Hammer here to do some crew kill. That's more crew kill in the cleaver, but the cleaver also requires resources that we're not in an abundance of. Manpower, de or manpower deployment is higher with this. That's another thing I had considered is, what if we start using OPEX gear? What if we send additional manpower? Does that manpower deployment limit increase the manpower deployment from this. And if it does, is it not more effective to do that? The questions here are numerous. Uh, is it not more effective to send this out and get manpower damage per second than it is to use this and just kill four crew every time this fires? Which is sort of also based on how frequently the beam weapon fires. There's a lot of different things here that are kind of difficult to weigh out. So if you guys know more about boarding pods and how the mechanics behind that work, let me know. I'll try to do some research and see what we can come up with for the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!